So I will introduce to you then Ms. Joanne Coons. Joanne Coons is um, one of the brightest um, legal minds that I've ever met. She's actually also a really fantastic human being and very, very fun to listen to. And, and so she speaks a lot for our company. She's been really gracious to share with us a little time on Good Friday of, of all days uh, to chat with us to go over kind of this, this material. But, um, but she is a CPA. She is a local attorney. She runs a really fantastic uh, law firm, and she works also with Marina Parkin, who happens to be our CPA, um, both personally. And she'll be jumping on in a second. She just didn't oh, get the new link. I love it. That makes me yeah. happy. Even yeah. great. So surprise. More the barrier. I'm the ECPA. More the barrier. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Very cool. All right. So um, if we're ready, Joanne, I'm, I can just go ahead and let's just get started. Get out of the way. <laughs> Get out of the way. That's right. I'm, I'm kidding. Gonna right on. All right. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Um, Marina will pop on in just a second. Um, we are, as he said, I'm Joanne Coons. I am attorney and CPA. So we are definitely well versed in both sides of this. What we're trying to do is hit all of our realtor um, clients and connections and prospects to try to help you guys understand what's going on with all of the loan programs that have become available, all of the changes under the tax law that have been made, and all of this is changing on a constant basis. So we will continue to bring you the latest developments and provide you, we're gonna provide you today what we know as of today, but this is fluid, it changes. And if you talk to your tax advisor or your CPA or your lawyer last week and they told you something different, um, it doesn't necessarily mean they were wrong, this guidance is, constantly changing. So um, I see Marina has popped on and joined us. Marina, do you want to start on the tax side? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. I apologize. I'm a little tardy. I, uh, these, uh, these Zoom links are moving faster than the tax provisions. <laughs> Trying to keep up with everything. Um, yeah, let's definitely start on the on the tax side. Uh, some of the rules, and um, you know, these some of these dates are moving pretty quick as well. So I'm trying to keep up with with everything. Um, you know, there's going to probably be some new stuff as well. So I will tell you what we know up to this date. So let's start with the basic stuff. You guys have, I'm sure, have all read or heard um, that the, the due date has been moved from April 15th to July 15th. Very important. I'm getting some questions on do we need to do anything on April 15th to get to July 15th? You do not. It's an automatic extension to July 15th. For those that need extra time, um, to um, file, uh, you know, a lot of you extend till September, October, that's in July is when we have to file for extension, but there's nothing to do until July 15th. Um, also, if you owe taxes for 2019, very important, uh, that um, payment is also due July 15th. Uh, with, there's going to be no extra penalties for paying it three months later. Uh, the first quarter estimates, for those of you that pay estimated payments, has also been pushed to July 15th. Um, the second quarter estimates, which are typically due June 15th, has not yet been pushed, but I'm sure we're going to see some guidance on that because that would be a little strange. Um, because of this deadline push, there's been some other uh, July 15th um, deadline movements. Um, one of them is an IRA contribution. Um, many of you, when you do a tax return, we work out IRA, no IRA, what difference would that make? So uh, they're also allowing that contribution to be made by July 15th. So as you're filing your return, you can still um, figure that out. Um, contributions to health savings account, um, same thing. It's July 15th is the new deadline. Um, the other uh, pretty important thing is um, the installment agreement payments and the, the monthly payments for those in um, offering compromise um, programs with IRS have also supposedly been suspended. I have been reading some articles that if the installment payments are coming out of your bank account automatically, uh, that they will still be coming out. So they're supposed to be suspending them, but I would watch your bank account. And if, if it is, uh, if you see the payments coming out, I would most certainly call uh, the main line from IRS, which is still open. It may be a little slow. Um, they're also suspending any collections on liens, um, levies, and um, you know, sending your uh, balance to uh, collection agencies, stuff like that. So um, um, if 
you guys have had notices from IRS before, you may still get notices because those are automated every 30 days, the notice is generated and it's gonna get mailed to you, but just know that they're not taking any action. So if in the notice it says, you know, we're filing a levy, they're not. So that all has been uh, pushed back. Um, Let's talk um, a little bit about the, these uh, stimulus payments. So you get for a single filer $1,200 if your adjusted gross income is $75,000. And for married filing joint, you get $2,400 if your adjusted gross income is under $150,000. Now, very important with the dates on this as well. If you have filed already your 2019 tax return, they're going to pull your adjusted gross income from that return. If you haven't yet filed 2019, they're gonna look to your 2018. So if your 2018 was lower year than your 19 and you haven't filed your return for 19 yet, we can prepare your tax return, figure out what your adjusted gross income is and just not hit push. That's what I'm doing now with the tax returns that are in my queue that I'm working on. If I see that their um, adjusted gross income is in excess, um, we wait to e-file until they get their uh, stimulus check based on the 18 return. If it's the other way around and your 19 is smaller, then of course you're motivated to file that. There's no deadline to file 19 return in order to get these checks. In other words, if you don't file by you know two weeks, you're just not gonna get the check, that's not true. Whenever you do file your 19 return, if you qualify um, under that, um, AGI threshold, then you will get your check. Um, if both your 18 and 19 have been high years and you don't qualify, what's going to happen is when you file your 2020 tax return, if your just a gross income is going to drop in 2020, especially now with you know, a lot of businesses uh, generating lower income and you as the business owner may not have the commissions. Um, if your 2020 is low and you would qualify, you will get this check. In, um, in the year when you file your 2020 tax return. So that's also important. So you're not gonna lose out. There's talks, of course, of additional payments. I, um, of course, we're watching that, but there has been nothing. And so these are the rules as it stands with the first round of the stimulus checks right now. Um, real quick, I'm gonna mention on the unemployment. Um, so unemployment provisions have been extended as many of you have, I'm sure, read and heard in the news to self-employed and independent contractors. In the past, unemployment has only been for employees with the W-2. So now that's open. Um, I'm sure you have also heard that it's been quite a mess. The whole system is not working. And um, it's, you know, it's just um, something, but it's available to self-employed. It may just take a little while to apply. And uh, there's also additional $600 per week payment for up to 39 weeks. And again, that's under current program. I, I think that they're going to expand that as well. Um, the IRA distributions to help you when you need cash. So let's talk about that for a minute. So for those of you that have IRAs, um, if you are younger than 59 and a half, and let's say you needed money, when you take out anything from your IRA, you would typically be subject to early withdrawal penalty. Again, if you're 50, um, under 59 and a half. So those penalties are done for distributions in 2020. Uh, granted, if you can show that you really needed the money and you were affected by the hardship. So which most of, you know, people would be um, that would take those distributions. For those of you that are over 59 and a half, you wouldn't be subject to early withdrawal penalty anyway. So that's not an issue for you. But for the younger folks that are taking that money out, again, you're not subject to early withdrawal penalty. Now, that 100,000, and then you can take up to 100,000 per person. So that 100,000 is taxable income. However, you can elect to have that uh, be taxed over three years. So that's also a big relief. Or you have up to three years to actually put it back in your IRA account because you may have taken it out and you're back to work, you don't need the money, you decide to put it back. When you put it back, you're not gonna get taxed on it. And again, you've got up to three years to put it back. So without it being taxed to you. The mechanics of this are gonna probably be messy when we get to preparing 2020 tax returns, because I don't know how those three year elections are gonna work and who's gonna police that two, three years from now. However, that is what's available to us right now. Um, also, for those guys that have 401k accounts, let's say you're a realtor, but your spouse may have a, a 401k account with their employer, and they're able to um, take a loan against their 401k account, 
Those loan uh, provisions have also been expanded. Typically, you're only, only allowed to borrow up to 50% of your um, fair market value of the 401k. Now you can borrow up to 100,000 uh, or up to 100%, not to exceed 100,000. Um, so again, I think there's still gonna be interest on those loans, but I think the repayment provisions are gonna be a little bit more relaxed. Um, for those of you that are going to be donating this year to um, charitable organizations, um, in the past, the donations have always gone into that miscellaneous deductions bucket. And if you are taking a standard deduction, you then never get a benefit because if all of your miscellaneous deductions are lower than standard, you take standard, and then you would lose out on charitable contributions if they're a couple of hundred bucks. Um, so what they're doing for 2020 because they want to encourage you to donate to these uh, charities in need is they're going to give you up to $300 of cash contribution above the line. So even if you end up taking a standard deduction um, on your tax return, you can, in addition to that, take up to $300 in cash donations. Um, so that's also um, a fairly important thing. Um, I think that um, the other thing I wanted to mention um, before I turn it over to Joanne is the business losses. So that's also a pretty important thing um, that people do, oh, yeah, you know, operating loss and they move on. They don't quite understand what it is. But if you've got a loss from your business and that loss can be used um, to offset against your other income. Um, in 2018, when the new tax law came out, they limited those losses to 80% use. They've now expanded it back to giving you an opportunity to use 100% of that loss against your other income. What happens if, if your other income is low or you have no other income? All you've got is your business loss. You can actually carry that loss back up to up to five years and recoup the tax that you paid in those years. Uh, the mechanics of it, again, you can only offset as much loss as you have. So if let's say you've got $30,000 net operating loss this year or last year, you can carry it back to the year where you had, let's say 100,000 of income. So now you can reduce that down and get recoup your taxes on that 30,000 that you paid you know, five years ago. That um, is also, that that's a great, great provision because the carrybacks have been, um, not allowed now for several years. So uh, that's gonna get you, for those of you that have net operating losses, that can get you some of those tax um, taxes back fairly quickly. So that's important. And that's uh, relating to losses for 18, 19, and 20. So what we're doing right now for our clients is going back and looking at some of their tax returns that have already been filed for 19 and even some of them for 18, um, just to see if they had any losses that we can now carry back and get them some of the tax uh, break um, faster. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to mention is the um, digital signature that IRS is now accepting for the tax return. So most of you e-file and you know, for e-file, all you need to do is sign that e-file authorization form. Uh, for those of you that still mail something into IRS, uh, IRS is now accepting digital signatures. So it doesn't have to be a wet signature. So that's pretty good as well. Um, I think that's it on my end at this point, Joanne, if you wanna jump in and then we can we can we can tackle the loans. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> I love it. Before we go, I've actually got a couple of questions that came hey. in. And hi, Marina. How are you doing? Hi. <laughs> All right. So we had a question from Catherine Parks. Um, and by the way, I'll let you know, as I'm looking through all the people who are on, and we have a ton of people we have, we're going right around 40 up and down right now, just so you guys are aware. Uh, okay. And a lot of them are realtors, but a lot of them are not realtors, just so you're aware. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so Catherine Parks, and I have a couple of questions. Catherine Parks asked this question. Uh, she works multiple jobs and receives numerous 1099s throughout the year and a W-2 from her full-time job. She's mm -hmm. already lost 1099 work related to COVID-19. Uh, but still maintains her W-2 full-time job for which she is grateful and not complaining. Good. Aww. It's a good job, actually. I like what she does. Is it possible to still submit for the CARES Act related to the lost income as an independent contract? Yes, and Joanne will tackle that in the, in the, in the PPP loan um, that she's about to describe. So yes, dot, that's dot, coming dot. up. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. I love it. I have one more question. So we're going to, so mm -hmm. what, so the answer there, Catherine, we're going to put a pin in that, but I think we're going to get to it pretty quickly, it sounds. Mm -hmm. All right, yep. perfect. All right. Here's the other question I have. This comes from Derek Patty, who is an ex-home realtor. 
assuming you are set up as a business, either an LLC or a PLLC, and you apply for the PPP, would you still qualify for the unemployment option? And if so, would you have to wait until the end of the payroll period for which you're receiving the PPP loan? I understand it to be exactly that. I would not apply for unemployment until you've gone through that forgiveness period after you get the PPP loan. Okay. So again, yeah, there, there has not been anything those... clear. Okay. There, there hasn't been anything clear on that yet. Um, but just the way that we're reading on how the funds are supposed to be used, if you have to show, and Joanne again is going to get into a little bit of that forgiveness, but when you get that PPP loan to replace your commission income or business income, um, if you also, if you have to show that this is the money that you are now getting. If you now have other sources of income that that you know you're receiving, let's say it's unemployment, I think that may hinder your ability to get that loan forgiveness. All right. So that's how we're sort of interpreting it now and from everything we're reading. However, that's not to say that more guidance won't come by next week. Um, you know, when it comes to these loans, and I don't want to jump the gun here, but in get my opinion, <laughs> <laughs> it's the way that I see right now, we're dealing with a hurdle of applications. So how do I apply? What do I put on this line and all that stuff? Once those applications are in, the next hurdle is going to be, well, wait a minute. How do I prove now the forgiveness? And I think that's where we're going to get a little bit more guidance, use of funds, how to document that. So I would say as we learn more, we'll let you know more. But I'd be a little bit weary at this point to advise, yes, also apply for unemployment and get the PPP loan. So I would wait on the unemployment. Simple answer. Go after one or the other. Right. And we're going to talk about PPP right now or yep. coming up soon, correct? It's, coming it's up you guys momentarily. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Joanne, I can see she is chomping at the bit to get back in here. <laughs> I love it. Um, you know me. I'm not used to having to wait to talk. This is really no. This, this, this is this exercising certain. my patience muscles. <laughs> <laughs> I right, kind of like it. having um, a counterpart, though. It's been all right. Well, I'm muting my microphone right now, so it's all you. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. I will say, Alex, questions might come up as we're going. If you want to interrupt me, um, I'm perfectly comfortable with that. What I want to do first is talk about the payroll protection program or PPP. Then we'll jump over to the EIDL, which is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Um, I'm going to talk about PPP first from the standpoint of individual realtor. And then at the end, we'll talk about teams. So if you're on a team, pay attention because the information is the same, but how you go about applying is going to be different. Okay. So let me just say that. So as you get questions, Alex, on while well, I'm a team and while well, I'm this, we'll clean that up. But if there's other questions that come up, please interrupt me. Um, the PPP for the payroll protection program is the most popular and the most widely discussed uh, program at this time. You can be individual realtor, Joanne Koontz, my 1099 and my commission checks come to me in my individual name on my social security number, on my schedule C of my 1040 tax return. I can be Joanne Kuntz PLLC if you've taken advantage of the other courses that I've taught and, and made yourself a, a business. It uh, doesn't matter if your tax is an S corporation or not, every type of realtor, including teams, is eligible for PPP. I'll say that again. Everybody is eligible for PPP provided that you have had commission income since February 15th of this year. So if you're brand new, you might fall into um, a category. It depends on if you've actually had any commission income or not. Um, you are going to be eligible no matter what. I've had a lot of realtors contact me in the last week saying, I talked to my CPA and they said I'm not eligible. That is incorrect. I did tell you at the beginning of this call, things are fluid, things are changing. But that has not changed. You have always been eligible since this program was enacted. Um, you apply through this program through your SBA lender, not directly on the SBA website. So that's also caused some problems for realtors, um, especially realtors having frustra experiencing frustrations are those who have not treated this business like a business. So if you have your real estate income going through a regular personal checking account that maybe is a separate personal checking account than your regular bills, but you don't have a business checking account to operate this business, that's where you're going to run into some trouble. You're still help out there, but it's going to be some more hurdles and it's going to be a little bit more frustrating. 
you're supposed to go to your bank where you already have a business bank account. If you have more than one institution, you're going to need to look and see exactly what, which bank is going to be better or able to process you more quickly. Um, it's not just bigger is better. Bank of America has done a great job of getting some good press uh, because they were open and ready for business on April 3rd when the program opened. Um, some of the other, Wells Fargo's gotten kicked around a little bit. Uh, they had a little bit of a penalty because of the fake checking account problem they had. So that's been alleviated. They're back open. Small community banks have actually done well as well. This is Herculean. This program is humongous. Um, in the grand scheme of the entire SBA lending in 2019, they lent $20 billion. This program alone is $349 billion. So if you think about not letting the banks off the hook for being slow, I understand people need access to this money quickly, um, but this is enormous. The, if you think about <laughs> the entire SBA last year did less than 10% of what they're gonna do this month. Um, there is also um, suggestions that they're gonna fund, the treasury is gonna fund the PPP program with another 250 million. So don't be afraid about them running out of money. They wanna get money in the hands of the people. How do you know how much you're eligible for? You can take two and a half times your average monthly gross commission income. Maximum of $100,000 for a year. Okay, so if you're a realtor by yourself, you're going to pull out your 1099 from last year. If you were not in real estate all 12 months, uh, you would divide your total 1099 commission income by however many months you had sales. So if you didn't start until uh, June, you'd take six months instead of 12. So if you made $300,000 in commission income last year, you're going to stop at 100. Okay, that commission income times two and a half two and a half times of that average monthly commission income is what you are eligible for under PPP. If you have a staff person, if you have an administrative assistant, if you are a team, whatever the owners of the team, they're, they're each owner of the team, assuming there's two, would count as an employee, as would any admin person that you have, whether you have a team or not. If I'm Joanne Coons Realtor and I have an admin person, fine. If Marina and I are team coons, two people still. Those, the incomes from all of that times 12, or divided by 12 times two and a half is the average monthly income. We've gotten a ton of questions about this. Yeah, I have um, a ton of questions that are coming in right now, Joey. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's do it. All right, I think I have three and, and we'll see by the time of it. All right, so we're going to go back. There was one that came in a minute ago that says, can you qualify for this? And I think specifically we're talking about the PPP. Uh, if you do not get W-2s or 1099s, but instead you take it on your 1120s to your personal account. Well, that's like if I had a green, pink sky grass, like that is kind of a mismatch of things. So um, even if you are... Some, some PLLCs are electing to be taxed as an S corporation. If you sat through that class and took the advice, that's what you're doing. You absolutely are still eligible. Your brokerage may not actually physically issue a 1099. That's okay, you're still eligible. We're gonna take that income, same thing, divided by the number of months you were in business times two and a half. Okay. The absence of the physical piece of paper of 1099 does not wipe you out. Okay, all right. So here, and, and so here's, are you gonna be eligible for, for the PPP or are you gonna be able to get this if you don't have a business bank account somewhere? What if you don't have a business banking relationship? You're still eligible, but now you've gotta fight through the masses to get somebody to pay attention to you. Okay. So what's happened is all of these banks had the floodgates open last Friday. So if from the bank's perspective, they also don't want to be perceived that they're helping new people and not their existing customers. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a real business bank account, you are going to be disadvantaged. You are still eligible, but you might have to wait for the smoke to clear for the banks to loosen up, to have time to come back and open a business bank account, deal with you um, and onboard you as a new client. The other reason that that's problematic is there are identity confirmations for meeting the purposes of the Freedom of Information Act and the uh, all the um, 
on money laundering and, and terrorism identity confirmations. The SBA has come out since last week and loosened the guidance on that. So now they basically have to have no suspicion that you are a terrorist. They don't actually have to confirm it, but the bank still doesn't, this is already like a big machine. And now when you don't have those things, you're glumping up the machine. They'll still help you. Um, I've got some names of folks that I can provide to you who are willing to take, uh, there's a local bank who is willing to take folks that they're not already a client, but of course that line is long. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So the answer there is that if you don't have a business banking account, you should get one so that you're in the first place, even after all of this is said and done, so that then you're operating as a real business. And that's a totally separate seminar that you and I have held several times. And I have a recording of that and why all that is important on my website. If you're interested in that, I'll send you a link. Um, yeah. If you're out there watching, you don't need a link, Joanne. You were the one speaking. But, um, but, I, but I have that and I can provide that for you. And it's an yeah. excellent series. Um, but, but the other part of it is that you're going to be fighting against the masses to get there. But they are open. They are available. I, have, I can say from personal experience, I'm a Wells Fargo banking customer. And we got shut down right out of the gate. And we have we have now gotten in line since they mm -hmm. reopened. We literally sat there hitting refresh because we didn't want to yep. get locked out. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, you know, but but we ended up opening a business account at a different bank specifically yep. because of this, right? All right. So with that being said, I have a couple of other questions. I'm going to try to keep them brief uh, yep. because I know that we have a lot to get through today. So number one, what if a, a realtor did not get their first commission check until January of this year? How do you calculate what your what you're That's okay. Get? As long as you've had a commission check by February 15th, you're okay. And then you're gonna take the number of months. So the January person would take total commissions divided by two or three months. You know, I guess at this point, three months because March is done. Okay, all right. So that would be your average. What that might do though, from a practical standpoint is make the dollar amount so low that the idle program might be better. But to say, are you allowed to? Yes. Okay, good. I like it. So the answer there is that you are allowed to. All right. Yep. If you're a broker owner, um, yeah, all right. So here's where we go. I have one more question. If you're a broker owner who receives a 1099, can you add your PL business profit to your 1099 amount for the total income that's divided to get the monthly amount? They're not giving you profit. They're going to give you income. So if you are the brokerage, is that what you're asking? Like if you, you are, I was talking, if, if, if I was answering you. I was, all right, the question is, if you're a broker owner who receives a 1099, so this is a broker owner who is, I assume also is selling. Income, who's also selling, yeah. Okay, That's okay. Nice. So as the broker owner, this is gonna, this is going to be a little bit specific to this person. So I'm going to give you the broad brush and then we might have to, to do some deeper advice on a, on a facts and circumstances basis. But if you are the broker owner, whether or not you also have commission, um, you would apply under the brokerage for any payroll that you are paying. So if there's somebody to answer the phone or an admin person or a scheduler, you, it would be the total income of the brokerage. Um, plus that admin and person in, in the total income of the brokerage would already include your commission income. What the broker owner cannot include is the commission income of the agents that they have, because each of those agents is going to apply for their own PPP. So you, Alex, aren't providing PPP for Derek Patty. Right. He's going to go get his own. So your, your number of your payroll doesn't include your split to your agents. All right. So as a broker owner, then, and now this is me asking for myself. So as, <laughs> so as, so as commission. Sorry, Q&A box. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so, so, so realistically, what we're looking for is um, net income, but before expenses to the company, right? Minus the commission. So the only thing that we're taking is we're taking total revenue, backing out the commissions that we're paying out that are going to get, so that nobody's double dipping. Correct. But, correct. But any of the expenses that we're picking up, we can include that? No. No. We're not talking about expenses at all. We're no talking about all. Income. income. So if I no. get, so as a company, say that I have $100,000 that came in and I paid out 80000 of that in commissions, that 20000 is what I'm talking about, that remainder. Correct. Correct. Okay. All right. Correct. You I'll have to think the purpose of this program is to keep small businesses up and running so that when this virus subsides, it's not a big, like starting a freight train to get moving again. They're trying to keep business moving. And instead of putting people home and paying unemployment, 
they're keeping the business up and running. So that way, as this loosens, things will come back quicker and it should make the economy kickstart much more quickly. So well, everything funny. about this program is meant to get money in the hands of workers, whether that worker is you as the business owner or the worker is someone on your staff. But the individual realtor receiving the 1099 is their own business. They're not part of your business. All right. Man, we have a lot of questions. So I, we should go keep going with the questions. Let me keep going and because I might sort some of that. Okay. Um, so, so unless there's any other questions that are specific to how you calculate. I have one simple question that I'll ask because I think it's really brief. And then the rest of them is, I think you'll probably cover. So yeah. if, is the payment going to be a one-time lump payment or is it going to be a monthly payment? It's a one-time deposit into your bank account. Okay. Allegedly in about a week after you get approved. Okay. All right. Now stay tuned because today's just a week from when it opened. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so yeah. for example, I had a client who got notification from Chase Bank on Sunday that he was approved and he's been told it'll be there by, he got approved last Sunday. Like, well, he applied last Sunday. He got notice of the approval this past Wednesday and he's told it'll be in his bank account next Friday. So from application to check, total is going to be about 12 days. That's pretty fast. Okay. If that happens, that's what we're being told. Stay tuned. I've been lied to before. Okay. All right. <laughs> so now that's how you get to the, the dollar figure is the two and a half times the income. There is a limit, Alex. I'm sorry to report and it's $10 million. So <laughs> well, I know you're blowing it up over there, um, but there is a $10 million limit. You yeah, have until June 30th. <laughs> you have until June 30th <laughs> to apply. Um, but I'm encouraging everybody to apply as quickly as possible. There, it is first come, first serve. Uh, they are expecting to continue to refund this as long as money is needed. However, every day we get more and more tightening and guidance and restrictions. So people who submitted last week are able to include their FICA, employer FICA portion. Folks who is submit now are not. And all that does is makes the complication of the calculation a little bit more and starts to hack away at your benefits. So sooner the better to apply. Um, you, there are permitted uses of this funds. You cannot just go crazy on this money. There are six reasons you can use this money. The number one reason they want you to use it is for payroll costs. That includes up to $100,000 of cash compensation being salary, whether it's hourly or annual, um, bonuses, commissions, et cetera, healthcare benefits, medical, family, paid time off, vacation time, and retirement benefits. So if you have a $100,000 person, if you're on a team and your team is you and your wife and you sell $300,000, you make $300,000 in gross commission income, there's a hundred grand for the husband, a hundred grand for the wife, plus any of these non-cash on top of that hundred. Does that make sense? Yes. So you might have somebody going in at 110 in terms of that payroll, two and a half times calculation. And payroll taxes are not included in that, in the qualified amount. So any social security or Medicare tax on that compensation is not included in the amount that you can use. So it's really just the compensation plus benefits. All right. Just the part that you would actually receive. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. Okay. Because again, you're trying to fund the guy that you're, is working with you. All right. Um, you can pay mortgage interest payments, not the actual mortgage payment, just the interest piece. Rent, interest on other business debts, again, not principal, and utilities. Now for realtors, you may not have rent and utilities. You might have your cell phone. Um, so for the average realtor, I would say, this is almost exclusively gonna be payroll. You might have your cell phone or something you can throw in there. I wouldn't get crazy with business home office and all that, you're not paying a rent, just Take the PP, take the payroll money. It's clean. It's easy, and it's the maximum loan you can get, anyways. So there's no sense in trying to shove rent in there if you don't actually have it. You're going to get the same dollars, anyways. Um, the the reason that the PPP is so popular is it has the possibility to convert from a loan to a grant and become 100% forgivable. That debt forgiveness is also exempt from income tax. If you remember back in the short sale days, if you didn't have to pay, you had to pay tax. That's not the case here. The government has made an exclusion for that. However, in order to get the exclusion, you must use 75% of your total loan amount on payroll. Now, for the realtors, how am I going to demonstrate that? 
I don't know yet, which is why it's very important that you have a separate bank account and that you treat this money and you document that you've spent it on your mortgage, on your utilities, on you know these same category of expenses. That's not Zillow. That's not marketing. That's not lead. That's generation. not paying off an old credit card either. Definitely That's not paying pay a credit renovation credit. to your house that while you're out of work you decided to you know fix the roof. That's not it. We don't have any guidance yet, as Marina said when she opened. Right now the panic is how do I get in? We don't have any guidance yet from SBA or the banks on what they're going to be asking for when you apply for the debt forgiveness. There is going to be a separate application process from what we're being told, that you're gonna to have to fill out paperwork and show what you did with the money. I can't give you too much guidance on that today. I expect that to be forthcoming, but everything that the legislature and everything that the um, committees inside the SBA are working on is how to get this money in people's hands first. So if you are careful about where you spend the money and you are careful to document what you spent it on, we will worry about buttoning up those, uh, those requirements when we get the guidance on the debt forgiveness. But know that essentially what I'm saying is if you get this loan, it's free and you don't have to pay it back provided you follow the rules. If you do have an employee, if you do have an admin person or somebody in the office that you're paying a W-2, you cannot get rid of them and you cannot cut their pay by more than 25% during this testing period. If you've already had an assistant who you had to let go a couple of weeks ago when this, when this first started to blow up, you can bring them back and restore that person mm -hmm. by June 30th and still be fully eligible for the debt forgiveness. If you got rid of somebody who needed to be gotten rid of anyways, you can replace them with someone who is good by June 30th and have no um, detriment to your debt forgiveness. If you've cut their pay because you were getting skinny on money, you just have to reimburse, you just have to bring them back and restore them to their, to at least not a cut of more than 25% by June 30th. Are there questions these, on this? These, date, these dates are also moving very quickly. This June 30th day to restore your employees also does not make much sense to me because again, if you give this loan, let's say next week, we are now in April. By May, end of May, your eight week is over. So who is going to police whether you restored your uh, admin assistant by June 30th and how that's gonna happen? So because these dates are so random and you read the stuff and this is February 15th and this is March 3rd and so on, you know, it's, it's, it's a little crazy, but, you know, I think that keeping in mind that keep these people and pay them no less than 75% of their pay is probably a good rule of thumb at this moment to keep in mind. Yeah. All right. We have a couple of questions that, that I want to get to, because I think we're, we're probably going to be close to getting off this subject shortly. So what if you had closings as a broker, uh, but you didn't pay yourself because the business needed the money to cover expenses okay. to be eligible for that? Yeah, because again, it's looking at the gross income. It's not looking at what you took home. You don't have to have a payroll as the small business owner. It could be the distributions. It doesn't have to be the payroll um, for the owner. In the large business, over 500 employees, they did not allow distributions, but under the small business um, rules, they did allow that. Okay. On the PPP, is the one-time payment, is that equal to the average monthly income times 2.5? Correct. That's the, that's the formula. Okay, so there you are, Brenda. Uh, and then we have a, a, a broker who was a practicing realtor, just opened her company March 13th, became broker owner, dissolved her PA and shut down the PA business. Is she going to be eligible? Not for this business, but if she was, um, if she had a 1099 income last year, I think she can probably use that commission to apply. But the business, it, it's got to be in, you've got to be in business by February 15th. So what that rule is trying to do is prevent the startups that are poor anyway and have no money from getting these funds because they're just now starting and they haven't done anything yet. So you've got to be in business by February 15th. The wrinkle with that one is going to be that she closed it down now. I don't know how yeah. I, we'd have to I don't know that there's going to be guidance on that. That uh, that could put, I would apply and let them tell you no, but um, yeah. all right. That's, so the answer there, gonna... yeah, the the answer there is that's a big old let's see, and that's just one of those 
That's one of those Sorry. fun lines. That's an unfortunate response. Perfect lawyer it's answer. A, it's a good response. It's an unfortunate <laughs> answer. It's, it's just what it is. So, <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. Okay. We're good. I'm out of questions for now. Okay. Perfect. Um, right. If there is any portion of this loan that doesn't get forgiven to you, it becomes a loan at 1% interest with a monthly payment um, term of two years. So the, it'll be a nice low interest rate and you won't have any payments to make for six months. Um, so that's kind of PPP in a nutshell. The lender fee to take the loan is 5% of whatever your loan amount is. So that's kind of PPP in a nutshell. All right. Is if, there a deadline on PPP to apply for PPP? June 30th. June 30th. Okay. Or when it runs out of money. So apply today. Up, right. uh, sooner than later. And it opened today for realtors. So and today for realtors. And you're doing a pop-up webinar on that, aren't you today? We are. We have a webinar at one o'clock where Maureen and I are going to physically have the application up and walk you through step-by-step. -step. Click here, check here, do this, do that, be ready to roll. And that's an We've analysis. gotten a lot of questions on that. So that's way more efficient if we can do that all together. I'm good. Okay. All right, let's pop over to EIDL. EIDL is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. The EIDL loan is what's going to be good for folks who had been new to the real estate industry and didn't have a lot of commission. Um, this, though, in, in the PPP loan, you could say you just have to be able to certify that the uncertainty of the current economic condition makes the loan necessary to continue operations. There is nobody other than FedEx and Amazon who is sitting there right now um, without uncertainty about the current economic conditions. So everybody's going to meet the requirement for PPP, but the EIDL loan, you have to show that you have sub suffered substantial economic injury. So you're going to have to show that closings died because of this or that your prospects, like the people you were working with, you know, people from New Jersey didn't come. This isn't going to be shocking. This isn't going to be difficult to prove, but you, this can't be preemptive. So if, if I had a manufacturing business and was still busy, I couldn't say, oh, I'm going to run and get idle if I still am busy. You have to wait until you suffer some impact. Um, lost, lost contracts that were pending or lost prospects to say, well, you think for realtors, it's going to be particularly easier because you could say, look, it's season and my buyers can't come from the north. Of course, I've lost business. Of course, I've had economic injury. This application process, you aren't having to beg a lender to look at you. You can go straight to the SBA website. Um, the link is available on our website, or you can Google SBA EIDL, E-I-D-L application, and it will take you to a COVID-19 section of the SBA website. You can apply right there. Very straightforward application process there. The maximum loan amount is $2 million. And the beautiful thing about EIDL is it is available to cover a broader variety of expenses than PPP. So under EIDL, you can take payroll expenses. You can take same paid time off, sick leave, et cetera. You cannot double dip though. So you can't apply for 20,000 of payroll in PPP and 20,000 of payroll in EIDL. So you can take PPP and then apply for EIDL and just not apply for payroll expenses in, in your EIDL calculation. Or you could do one or the other. You could do PPP first and then when it runs out of money, then do EIDL. The EIDL program is open until the end of this year. Does that make sense? You can't put the same expenses on both yes. loans. What you, you can't double dip is what Correct. you're Correct. There is no, no double, dip. double dipping and they will not allow the double dip. Correct. So, so there is an overlap that those two kinds of expenses are available in both programs. You just can't utilize them simultaneously. Same thing with mortgage, same thing with rent. However, under EIDL, you can use the principal loan payments, the mortgage payment. You can repay other obligations of the business that cannot be met due to the lost revenue. So this would be business credit card debt, business loan agreements. If you've got a car loan, if you've got a copy or lease or something like that in the office. Um, it also covers increased costs to obtain materials because due to supply chain interruption. Obviously that's not gonna be specific to realtors, but there are six permitted uses of the idle funds. Okay. So this works really well for, let's say a brokerage where mm -hmm. you can apply for your commission under PPP and then for the cost of actually running your yeah. business the operating expenses could get you 
um, through idle. Otherwise, just like Joanne said, you do not apply for payroll at the same time, but idle will be available when the funds run out. You've got eight weeks to use the PPP funds when you get them. If you're still not working and are still losing commissions, that's going to be then the time to go and get idle to continue to help yourself with payroll needs. Correct. Now, the reason we said if you have not been in the business for very long, but you have been in business for under idle, you have to be in business at prior to January 30th of this year. So it's two weeks sooner than PPP. Um, but it's not looking at your revenue. It's looking at your expenses. So this is what you're going to want if you are newer, um, whether you're brokerage or realtor. Um, there is a $10,000 emergency grant component of the EIDL loan application. You can apply just for that $10,000 or more if you have expenses. So that $10,000 is completely forgivable. Mm -hmm. It's assumed there will be no tax on that forgiveness, but it's not specified like it is under the PPP program. We expect that will be the case uh, once more guidance comes down. But when you take idle, you need to understand you are taking a loan other than that 10,000 that you are gonna have to repay. It's 3.75% interest and it's amortization is 30 years rather than two. All right, and, mm -hmm. and so I think this is related. So the economic injury disaster loan, that can convert to a grant. That's what you're saying. Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. Ten. Yeah. So okay. if I'm a brand new realtor and I started at Christmas time, I can get this free ten thousand, even if I'm not eligible for PPP because I didn't have any closings. Okay. I love it. All right. Okay. Now, if you take the ten thousand or any idle money, because keep in mind the idle program is an emergency program that has existed inside the SBA for some time. It's a program that's turned on and off as disasters have occurred over the years, be they weather related or whatever. So with the EIDL program, historically, you've had to demonstrate that you've exhausted all other avenues to take funds. They've relaxed that. You don't have to do that here. Um, another thing that they've said is that customarily, you would have to have a personal guarantee or collateral of the business assets for the loan. Um, they're now becoming more lenient with those things. They're now saying, unless your loan is over 25,000, they're not gonna require collateral and no personal guarantee for, unless the loan is over 200,000. Um, you also are not required to pledge your real estate. That is customarily the case under the EIDL program, but you also have to report if this EIDL program has been open since um, about a month now. So before PPP. So some people applied for idle already, and then PPP got passed. If you have an idle loan, it's going to get refinanced into a PPP loan by default. You don't have to do anything. That will happen when you process your PPP application. The $10,000 debt forgiveness inside idle will be a part of the debt forgiveness of PPP. So you also cannot double dip on that 10 grand. If you do idle and PPP, you don't get full debt forgiveness on PPP plus 10,000 of idle debt forgiveness. So why does that matter? I would say if you're eligible, you would apply for PPP first. Then if PPP runs out of money and you, you know, your eight weeks testing period goes by and you need more money, then jump over and apply for idle. I would not do both at the same time. Okay. It's not illegal to do both at the same time, but from planning strategy, I don't see a benefit to doing both because yeah, what's going to happen- You really need to uh, make sure that you take advantage of that forgivable portion on the PPP. I mean, that's a big deal. So we're trying to find, to make sure that how these things work from what we understand is to get you the best opportunity to get those funds and make sure that you still qualify for the forgiveness. Okay. which is why the two loans, got to, you've got to be really careful. The other thing I did want to mention about applying for both, for those of you that have, let's say, a real estate portfolio where you've got rental properties and such, you can apply for EIDL. We're asking for the expenses on the carrying those rental properties where you, you know, you're losing revenue, you're losing the rental um, income. So you've got carrying expenses. You can apply for EIDL loan to cover that. So again, just make sure you're not applying for the same use, which is the payroll or your commission replacement. 
Yeah. We have about 10 minutes left on our scheduled webinar, and I know that we're still running full speed ahead. So I want to respect your time, Marina, respect your time, Joanne. You let me know what if we should if we should go over to like a Q&A period. Or yeah, I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty much done on the idle requirements that I wanted to get out there. So okay. I'm happy to, um, you know, to make mention uh, to take Q&A now. Okay, let's just go ahead and do that. I have a question that, that is here right now. So two questions. Number one, um, this webinar that you're doing at one o'clock, I did just put out a link uh, to that webinar in our comments. So anybody who wants to register for that, if you're on this webinar, if you want to do that next webinar at one o'clock, and that's where you're going to cover application for independent contractors. If you want to be on that, register there. Um, is that going to be a recorded webinar that people who register will have access to after? Absolutely. Great. So just to make sure that we're registering. Uh, and then, oh man, now the questions are flying in. Okay. So let me, Just, up. let me jump in there. All of the webinars that we've done and will continue to do are available on our both of our Facebook pages, the Coonson Associates and the Coonson Park and pa Facebook pages, on our websites and on our YouTube channel. Yeah, you guys are fantastic. I love, I love. Them. We got a YouTube channel. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> Welcome to 2002. <laughs> right. All right. Okay. Um, Shut up. <laughs> We I had a YouTube one. channel, you we just to, didn't know how to use it. Since 2002. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Do you know, all right, um, since agents are 1099, so they only qualify for the, for federal uh, UC, I don't know what UC is. So Unemployment only qualify, compensation. Unemployment compensation, okay. So since agents are 1099 and only qualify for federal unemployment compensation, but we apply through the state, and then the state says there is no income reported, what do you do to get the federal money? Well, I think that's where the change came in where in the past, the income that was reported was your W-2. But now that they've opened up the unemployment applications to take the independent contractors and self-employed, who knows where they're gonna ask for that? Because, you know, and you hear on the news that the, the, the program is down, you know, their website is down, the mobile site is down. So they're giving out the paper applications, but I think they're giving out old school paper applications that don't take into account these self-employed people. So I haven't gone through the process or haven't looked at it or, or anything like that. So I'm going to do a little more digging over the weekend too on unemployment to see if I can find anything else. But that, that's the old way to say, hey, you, we have your salary recorded as your W-2. Oh, but wait, it's open to self-employed individual, but where do I put that income? So that's one of those like, you know, it's flooding in the unemployment, which is why you can't apply, which is why these people are in line for weeks. Okay. All right. So here's what we have next. So time frame for approval on PPP. Do you have an idea? So far, we've seen them just in a few days. Um, personally, we did our application for our firm. Um, we, were, we were able to submit on mm -hmm. Sunday, and we got notification day before yesterday that we were approved. Okay. All right. So that's pretty quick. We have somebody who's talking about they applied two weeks ago and didn't get a response yet. Well, it's because you couldn't apply yet because the realtors can't, the independent contractors couldn't apply until today. So she's a broker. So this, oh, this okay. The broker could, the broker could. Um, well, it wasn't even open as a, until last Friday. So yeah. maybe two weeks ago. Maybe was this not was the PPP. idle loan. And I know that we did our idle loan about two weeks ago as well yes. before PPP came around. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were like, like day one, like the Dow Jones crash. And we we're like, oh, there's idle. Cause I remember 2008 really clearly. Yes. <laughs> like that is seared into my brain. And so we were like, yeah. okay, here we go. Idle. And, um, and, and I haven't heard back from on our side either. So hopefully. But I, I hear this from my clients, uh, everybody, the same thing that people, even that 10,000 advance that that grant that's supposed to come first before they look at the rest of the loan you know, it's supposed to hit your account within three days, then it was a week. And now I've got, I talked to several clients this week and they said they haven't seen it. No, no email, no nothing. No call, no show. So. All right. What if the forgivable amount of $10,000 is more than the PPP amount? Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so doing kind of some of that basic math, Joanne and I went back and forth a little bit. It seems to me that if your commission income is 50,000 or less, 10,000 of idle money is more than that percentage of PPP that you would get. Okay. So if you're 50 and under, commission-wise, not age, 
in a, in a one year period. <laughs> yeah, correct. Okay. Apply for idle because that 10,000 is going to be more than the PPP. Once you're creeping over 50,000 in commission income, then PPP is going to give you more when you do the math, you average monthly times. Two so your, months. your basics, just the threshold that you're looking at is roughly $50,000. If you're yeah. more than $50,000, go PPP. If you're less than $50,000, go EIDLE, yeah. right? And yeah. it's, we're saying idle, but I just want to, it's not IDLE, it's, it's EILD. <laughs> It's the yes. IDL. The IDL. I can yes. right. <laughs> okay. Yes. The IDL. All right. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Um, yes. So I have a question. I have seen this question pop up over and over and over. This is not specifically related to realtors, um, but regarding unemployment specifically for these are going to be for 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 people who are who are tipped employees, people who are mm -hmm. W two employees. I mean, the the heart and soul and backbone of our workforce are what's going on with unemployment for them right now? Because I, I understand that that process is just, I mean, it's a, I'll use the word hullabaloo, but you can put whatever it word is. You want right in there. Hot mess. A hot mess, hot we'll put a hot yeah. mess. Um, and we're not, <laughs> getting, we're not seeing the funds, right? And we're not seeing any kind of communication on it. No. And you know, I had a couple of business owners, my clients that I talked to this week. So what they're trying to do is while they're putting the application together for PPP or waiting for the funds, they've, you know, furloughed their people or let them go. And then I said, okay, well, why don't you collect unemployment until I get the loan and then I hire you back, which is allowed. Well, by the time these people are trying to get through the unemployment system, it's not happening. So it's almost like you're going to get those PPP funds first. So everybody's been really frustrated because even for those weeks that people were out of work, they couldn't get through to the unemployment. So just watching the news last night, again, they said they were trying to fix the, I guess, their website and uh, and the guy was, you know, on the news doing it and he couldn't get in. So like, the, it's nothing's fixed. And that's why I think they're handing out the paper applications, which again, I think are old form. That's not taking into account the self-employed individuals. So it is a completely a hot mess. You know, they're working on it, but okay. I think it's, it's taking people weeks and weeks and weeks and they just keep, you know, submitting and submitting and. Okay. All right. So, uh, my, I understand that they shut down the unemployment site last night to fix some stuff. There's a new site for apps, so try today. That's just a comment that just came up. So for those of you who've been doing the unemployment, just like everything else, just keep trying. I can tell you yeah. from experience that just refreshing the page changes the content dramatically sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's changing literally just that quickly. Like, and you'll see things all the time. It's, it's a part of the news. So, mm -hmm. all right. Um, I think... I'm looking back through our questions and I think we've got it all done. I did just put a final out there, a final request. Do you guys have anything in closing? Let me do something first. Number one is that um, the, un the unemployment for Realtors, the webinar that you're doing, I have blasted that and will continue to blast that webinar because I think that that's important. And the fact that you're going to go and go on a Facebook Live and just, or, or on, not on a Facebook Live, but on a Zoom meeting that you have to mm -hmm. register for, but you're going to do that like, Online. Literally line item by line item. We are yeah, literally. Line item. But let me correct you, Alex. It's the PPP application. It's the PPP we're doing application. Today. Not, not unemployment. Not See, unemployment. This is, why, this is why you need to listen to the professionals and not not me for sure. <laughs> All right. Um, and, and as I said, that now we have some other questions. Is is that average over would have been based on January through March? So for I guess this is for PPP. Mm -hmm. Is the or maybe it's for idle. I don't know. Uh, is the average for what you can get, is that based on your January through March 2020 commissions, or I think the, the corollary, or is it over the 12-month period preceding? It's both. I, I was not with you on that. So, <laughs> so, with, so essentially, what I think the starting point is the 2019 commission. If you were not in business for the full 19, let's say you only started earning commission in June, then you can average the last six months. You can also choose to have a rolling 12 months average. If So you can start from March 1st to March 1st. That's how I understand it, Joanne. Am I correct? correct? In figuring out what your commission was. If you only started as a realtor in December, then yes, you can use January to March numbers uh, for the average. Okay. All right. So do we have anything in closing that we'd like to leave um, these enormous amount of people that we have watching our webinars talking about? I would just say if you have patience, you will get through this much easier because 
it is a big machine at the government. It's a big machine at the lenders. Um, you can get mad, but that will not put you through faster. It will just aggravate you more. Um, I do think it is the intention that people will get the help they need, but it it is a machine that is started. And like I said, 20 billion through SBA last year, 350 billion and probably gonna be another 250 billion uh, going through the SBA mm -hmm. in a month. So just keep that in mind. It's It's not that anybody's unwilling to help you. There is a ton of information out there. It changes constantly. Be involved, be your own advocate. Do not just throw your hands up in the air and go, well, I, they told me I didn't qualify, so oh well. You've got to, there's a lot of misinformation out there and a, a lot of the professionals are trying to read a lot of material and still do things like this. We're trying to teach, we're trying to learn, we're trying to work. So. Be patient with everybody you see from the grocery store to, um, to your accountant's office because everyone is doing the best they can to help as many people as they can. We've gotten a lot of email um, from people saying, my accountant said this and my accountant didn't do that. And we get that you're frustrated. We will help you. We are happy to do so. Um, but we're going to keep trying to do these large formats so that we can get to everybody and get as many questions answered as we possibly can. Okay. I love it. Guys, thank you so much for your help today. I will say that I reached out about a week ago for Joanne to come in and do this webinar. And I mean, I got a response back like that and said, yes, we want to come in. You guys, you guys are, um, you have servant hearts and I appreciate everything you guys have done. Um, in the years that I've known you, I've never seen anything to indicate any other way. Both of you are fantastic. I'm going to give you guys both a huge plug. Um, thank you. Yeah. So, thank we, you. I, so we've been using you guys per, personally and professionally mm -hmm. um, for accounting services for several years now. And that has been a remarkable shift. Um, I like where we are, were before. I love where we are now. Uh, Joanne, you do a, such a fantastic job within our Realtor community. You are, your, your company is fun to work with. You're communicative. It is not your normal and typical attorney um, uh, experience. <laughs> that you deal with, no. right? It is far better than working with most title companies, far better than working with most attorneys. You guys are real gems here in our local business, and I appreciate it. I'm, I'm happy to count both of you as friends, and thank you again for helping us out with this. Thank uh, you. If you need us, give us the buzz. Will do. Have a great Thanks, day. Thanks, everybody. Stay safe. Thanks. Right. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>